What's up, YouTube? This is True Raw 4 TV. All right, so once again, I want to give a shout out to the brother Aram for the donation to the channel. All right, via the PayPal. Much respect to the brother Aram. Once again, showing love to Too Raw for TV, aka Too Raw for Sports. All right, I truly do appreciate it. Now, um, I want to do a series. All right, I, I, I was debating whether it should be top ten. I, I think I'm gonna make it top five. Um, so I want to do a series, little series, top five brother tandems in the NBA. All right, top five tandems as far as brothers in the NBA. And, of course, when I mean brothers, I mean not brothers, not brothers, but genetic brothers. And um, I hadn't really thought about this one. So I wanted to give it some time. And um, I've come up with top a top five list. Now, you may not agree with this list. You may have an extended version that goes top 10 or what have you. But at number five, I've come up with the Grant Brothers. Okay? Now, a few of you who are younger, who have become um, fans of the Chicago Bulls through reading about them, all right? Uh, and you weren't actually watching basketball in the 90s, but you just became fans of the Bulls because, hey, you know, you just read about history and you like the team. Well, some of you may be surprised that Horace Grant had a twin brother that played in the NBA. As a matter of fact, some of you may have just seen old game footage of the Bullets in the mid-90s and said, wait a minute, did, did Horace Grant get traded to the, 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 the Wizards? Well, Bullets back then, I didn't know about it. No. Your eyes do not forsake you or deceive you. He had a twin brother named Harvey. All right. Now, Harvey played the NBA in the 1990s at the same time, obviously, the Horace Grant was playing. Now, as far as who was the better player during the 1990s, everyone would have told you Horace. He was the better player. Uh, though you can make an argument that in today's NBA, Harvey may have the better career because Harvey was more of a jump shooting tweener guy. Like, like uh, I, he was smaller than Horace. He was about 6'8", maybe 200 pounds, 200, 205. Um, sometimes he could play power forward, but a lot of times he played small forward. Um, but in today's league, I could definitely see him being a stretch four. Now, he shot 47% from the floor during his career. Uh, his numbers don't jump out at you. 47% from the floor for his career. 27% um, from outside. But then again, Biggs did not shoot a lot of threes, which would definitely be not the case if he played today's era. And he shot 71% from the free throw line, which was respectable for a power forward at that time, even though he could play the three. His career averages of 9.9 .9 points, 4.4 .4 rebounds, and 1.6 assists also don't jump out at you. But he did have a three-year peak with the then Washington Bullets where his numbers looked pretty good. Now, he was never an all-star. But during this three-year peak, he averaged 37 minutes a game, 18.3 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 49% shooting from the floor, and 75% from the foul line. So, I kind of give you an idea how deep the NBA was back then. Like, a guy like that would almost be like borderline all-star, but he was never even seriously considered to be an all-star. Uh, now, to be fair, he wasn't playing with Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen. His best teammates in his career during that time period were a late renaissance Bernard King. Um, and then later on, I think he played a reduced role with AI early, early in AI's career. That's about the best teammates he ever played with. Uh, but getting back to my point, 
I think in today's NBA, he would be a stretch big, like a stretch four. Um, definitely probably be shooting more threes. I can't tell what he would be shooting from outside, but that would definitely be more of his game because he was a jump shooting big man. He wasn't a guy that muscled up in the interior like uh, Horace, and you know his you no know, his game was not like that. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, Horace would be the opposite. Horace was the, the better player. In fact, one year, Horace was an all-star in 93-94. Um, his career averages, Horace Grant, was 11.2 points, 8.1 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 51% shooting from the floor, 69% from the foul line, which was respectable for a power forward at that time. And his best years were between 1989 and 1997 when he averaged 13.3 points, 9.2 rebounds, 2.6 assists, uh, 1.2 steals, 1.1 blocks, 53% shooting, 69% from the free throw line during that time period. So, and of course, uh, Horace Grant was a four-time NBA champion. He won a championship three times with the Chicago Bulls, 91, 92, and 93. And, of course, he won a championship during the 2001 season with uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, as far as college is concerned, uh, I think Horace went to Clemson. And I think Harvey went to Clemson and then later on Oklahoma. So um, back in the 90s, Horace was the better player. But I don't know if they're playing today whether Horace would be the better player. I think today, because of their respective games, Horace would be respected. But I think Harvey would put up the bigger numbers. I think he would put up numbers like he did with the Bullets more consistently, 17, 18, 19 points a game. So, you know... <clears throat> That's my take on that. Like, uh, one of them, Horace Grant, was a household name f for many in the 1990s, especially the early championship teams. Later on, of course, Horace Grant um, left the Bulls via free agency, went to the Orlando Magic, became a fan favorite there, even though he we hated him here in Chicago for doing that. But then again... As time has moved on, we kind of understand why he did do what he did from a business standpoint. But you know, as Bulls fans, we saw him as a traitor. But ultimately, he did lead that team to a finals. And he did get revenge on Michael in, so, in some sorts. Because in 95, with the Orlando Magic, um, that team beat the Bulls with Michael Jordan coming back out of retirement four games to two. And Horace can say this, even though I don't think he would have been a difference maker, in 1996 when the Bulls did sweep Orlando, Horace Grant did not play in that series, which is something that gets forgotten. But Horace was a solid rebounder, not as great as Dennis, but he was a solid rebounder, a, a rugged interior scorer, defender. He did a lot of the dirty work, and the Bulls really, really uh, depended upon Horace Grant to do what he did. As a matter of fact, I believe in some of those playoff runs in the early 90s, I think Horace Grant had a higher win share total in at least one of those runs than Scottie Pippen did, which goes to show you how important Horace Grant was to those championship teams. Uh, so, yeah, Horace was the better player uh, overall, the better resume, Harvey, you could argue, was quote-unquote more skilled. But I just go to show you the skill sometimes gets a little bit overstated. But I think all in all, when you look at it, I think as far as brothers tandem, I could see them being top five. You could make an argument and put some other people in there. Um, you know, I'm just going to say this uh, just because of uh, when you
you look at the overall list I have, you could probably throw them in there. You could even argue, well, what about Bernard and Albert King? Well, Bernard King is obviously the superior player to Horace Grant. But Albert, I don't know, man. Albert, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And also, hardware does mean something. And the fact that Harvey did have that little stretch in the 90s where he was averaging 18 points, I just said, well, I'll go with them. But anyway, number five, I have the twin brothers of Horace and Harvey. Tell me what you guys think.